and I'm going to give the floor to Anna Azekamp for the GUE. Thank you, Chair. I feel frustrated that we have to object again to the extension of the approval period of the harmful pesticide, uh, flumioxazine, uh, for the second time already. And even more frustrated because I know that it will most likely not even be the last time. The enormous delay in the reassessment procedures of pesticides is absolutely unacceptable. We need adequate financing, adequate capacity, and the proper procedures for assessment of chemicals uh, on member state level, as well as on the European level. Flumioxazine was approved 17 years ago for the first time in 2003 and identified as toxic for the reproduction uh, not long after. But because of tricks of the producers, the producing industry, um, asking for derogation, citing that it is essential for agriculture. Um, uh, we are today again discussing an extension of the original and completely outdated uh, authorization for the seventh time in a row. A large part of this enormous delay is due to the fact that the Commission did not have the relevant uh, uh, assessment methodologies in place and has delayed giving a mandate to EFSA to assess the endocrine disrupting properties of uh, flumioxazine, which it only did last December. So again, we will have to wait for new assessments. And all the while, the producer is happily collecting profits from its hazardous sales, while farmers Residents in rural areas and consumers are exposed to these toxic properties, and this is truly outrageous. With working methods as this, the Commission is practically inviting companies to misuse this broken system by asking all derogations possible, sending incomplete data sets, and challenging, challenging all decisions. Um, because they know that it will keep their products on the market, even though it is very clear they do not meet the safety criteria. And we acknowledge that the Risk Assessment Committee of ECA has said that this substance should not longer be classified as reprotoxic uh, one, but only as reprotoxic two, as it deems that hazardous effect of these pesticides cannot be seen as proven for the humankind. I would argue that even the suspicion uh, that it can damage unborn children should be enough to ban a pesticide. But even then, uh, flumioxazine is also suspected endocrine disrupting chemical and should therefore not be used. And I really urge the Commission to take note of the repeated calls of this Parliament to take this pesticide off the market and to speed up its reauthorization procedures together with the member states. Thank you. Okay, uh, another co-sponsor, uh, Maria Arena. Um, Through this implementing act, the Commission is once again wanting to extend for a further year 28 substances including flumioxazine, despite a first objection adopted here last year. We are aware that the Risk Assessment Committee issued a change, moving it from reproductive category 1 to 2. This change of category would mean that flumioxazine would no longer meet the criteria presupposing its authorization. However, that doesn't change the fact that EFSA declared in 2014, then in 2017, and then in 2018 that flumioxazine is an endocrine, a probable endocrine disruptor. The Commission must apply the precautionary principle when there might be dangerous health effects and there are scientific doubts. We might also ask, why is the Commission waiting to give EFSA a mandate to assess the effects of flumioxazine on the endocrine system based on the 2018 regulation? Which means that we could again have this product approved, despite its danger. If we look at the treaties, we are asking this committee to oppose the reauthorization of flumioxazine, which we say again is a probable endocrine disruptor. Thank you. 
Tilly Metz for the Greens. Uh, replacing Tilly Metz. Tilly Metz, <laughs> always yours. <laughs> So hello, I'm Tilly Metz here. No, so she apologises because uh, she couldn't uh, be at the two meetings at the same time. Uh, but much has been said already. But I think most important is that this file, um, we're talking about Flumio Xazine, it it's, was expiring in 2014. So we are talking about a file that expired in 2014 and since then has been extended many times and we are now at the seventh time where it's going to be extended where we know that the file is not complete and we may see a change of their carcinogenic level and there might be a change uh, because the RAC is uh, uh, proposing that but the problem here is that it's probable a endocrine disruptor and EFSA already caused for that. They had already areas of concern in 2014. They repeated that in 2017 and in 2019. And only December 2019, the Commission asked now EFSA to properly assess whether it is an endocrine disruptor. So the Commission has failed to protect our environment and our citizens by not acting swiftly on making sure whether this is an endocrine disruptor, yes or no. We still don't know that. Very likely we will come to the conclusion in August again that not sufficient data are there. But meanwhile the Commission is saying let's prolong it for the seventh time. I sincerely think that this time it's really time that the Commission is saying stop it. We don't have the necessary data and we have to protect our environment and our citizens and we are not going to prolong it another time. We object to this again last, as we did last year. Then and we hope again that the Commission is for once listening to the citizens and its safety instead of to a company's interest. Thank you for the non-inscrit Eleonora Avi. Okay, sorry, Elona Ivy is not participating. Uh, so we move to the EPP, uh, Mazilis. Please push your speak button. No, it's okay. Yes, please go I ahead. Hear you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm against the objection due to the following reasons. The Commission is extending the approval period of 28 active substances for one year. One of those substances, flumeoxazine, is a pesticide used for the control of weeds and soya, peanuts, and a variety of vegetable and fruit crops. The approval of flumeoxazine eventually will expire before a decision on the renewal will be taken until 13th of June 2020. The extension is based on the Commission's claim that the assessment of the substances has been delayed for reasons beyond the control of the applicant. The extensions foreseen in the draft regulation are necessary because it will not be possible to adopt the decision on the renewal or non-renewal of the approval of the active substances uh, before the expiry of the current approval for reasons beyond the control of the applicant. In such a situation, Article 17 of regulation uh, number 1107 to uh, 2009 obliges the Commission to extend the approval period of the substances concerned. EFSA conclusions of 2014 as referenced in the objection found a low risk to birds and mammals, honeybees, non-target arthropods, soul macro and microorganisms. According to the same conclusion, it does not pose a high risk of bioconcentration. Following all these arguments, I suggest to vote against the objection. Thank you. I have no speaker for Renew, so I move to ECR and Pietro Fiocchi. Hello, Mr. Chair. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I cannot accept that we ban something 
on the basis of the lack of data. I think the EU should fix this problem because uh, the EU Parliament needs to take informed decisions and uh, give uh, the proper indication to the Commission regarding banning or uh, uh, renewing approbation of some substances. I want to remember to the honorable members that there are some juridical uh, uh, precedents here uh, regarding the Article 17 uh, of the Regulation 1107-2009 that mandates the Commission to extend the approval period and that the classification of active substances does not establish ground to not extend the approval of the substance. Now, when they say it's a probable endocrine disruptor, this kills me. I mean, I want to know it is or it is not. And of course, if it is, we need to kill it. But until we do not know, we cannot take a decision, an informed decision. So from this reason, the ECR is against this objection. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I forgot to say that I hadn't any speaker for ID neither. Uh, so we move to the Commission. Mr. Berendt. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Um, let me first start by uh, joining uh, Ms. Hasekamp in uh, expressing frustration about the need to extend the approvals of active substances. That is indeed something that the Commission has to do regularly, and we regret that we have to do this regularly because of the many delays that are incurred in the assessment process for active substances. And uh, un unlike Ms. Hasekamp, however, I would not subscribe uh, to the claim that this is due to the tricks of uh, companies. In particular, when it comes to the derogation possibilities from the cutoff criteria, these are foreseen in the regulation, and it is the right of all applicants uh, when substances seem to meet the cutoff criteria that the derogations uh, are examined. Um, on fumioxacin in particular, in, uh, the first EFSA conclusion indeed dates from 2014, and it was the first time that a substance uh, met uh, the exclusion criteria or the cutoff criteria. And therefore, it is not surprising that the uh, tools in order to assess these derogation possibilities were not all uh, ready at the time and had to be uh, developed. Um, and that is also what the other uh, opinions of EFSA, the conclusions of EFSA that Ms. Arena referred to were about. They were not about the ED properties, they were about uh, the derogation possibilities of negligible exposure and uh, essential uh, use. But the key change came in, uh, in 2019, in March, when the ECA Risk Assessment Committee indeed confirmed that the substance is no longer to be classified as reprotoxic category uh, 1B. Hence, it does no longer meet the cutoff criterion uh, of that nature. And the reason why this took so long is, again, because the rapporteur member state took very long uh, to submit a classification proposal uh, to ECA. So, again, a delay that is regrettable but certainly not due uh, to the applicant. Um, the, uh, likewise, uh, if this uh, classification is no longer applicable, the substance is also no longer a candidate for substitution unless it were to be confirmed to be, confirmed to be an endocrine uh, disruptor. But that is exactly what we are uh, investigating now as the, as the, the only outstanding uh, point. Um, and several uh, members have raised the question, why did we only mandate EFSA in December uh, and not earlier? Well, we started discussing immediately with the member states in the standing committee uh, in March, informing them about the RAC opinion. And then in July, we presented uh, the, uh, the draft mandate uh, to EFSA inviting member states to comment, uh, which they did until the October meeting. And then uh, very early in December, we sent the mandate to uh, EFSA to clarify whether the substance is an endocrine disruptor in line with the new criteria that are now applicable. Um, and let me also underline that uh, EFSA concluded that there are low risks to birds and mammals, honeybees, non-target arthropods and soil uh, macro and microorganisms and there is no high risk of bioconcentration, and the risk to aquatic organisms and non-target plants can be mitigated. So unlike uh, what Mrs. Hasekamp said, 
there is no clear evidence that the substance does not meet the approval criteria. And therefore, we cannot refuse the extension of the approval, uh, also because these delays are not due uh, under the responsibility of the applicant. The Commission has no margin of maneuver here. We are obliged by the regulation to uh, grant the extension. And this has also been confirmed recently by the European Ombudsman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So uh, we will vote uh, on both objections, uh, starting now, because I will declare the vote open, and we can vote up to 4.45. So that's the end uh, of the meeting.